sadness and grief. My joy comes from this very book. Ah, oh, fabulous book. From it I've learned to think, to wonder at God's creation. This René Descartes is an absolute genius. He's taught me all there is. You must just be like me then! <laughs> Are the stocks still open? How much do me? He's found out all there is to know about philosophy, astronomy, mathematics. Fascinating. But the one thing he's taught me most is to doubt. Let, let me quote. In pursuit of knowledge, four rules must be followed. To accept nothing is true unless it is clearly recognized to be so. Solve problems systematically by analyzing them part by part. Always proceed from simple considerations to more complex ones. I can manage your simple ones. <laughs> Andy Campbell, I will get my father to put you back in the stocks. Nah, it was to be. And go over everything thoroughly to make sure that nothing has been left out. It is also simple. Doubt, go on doubting. And where does that lead him? And me. Well, to the simple phrase, cogito. I'll go some. Oh, come on, man, darkness! <laughs> or to put it in a language that most of you would understand. I think, therefore, I am. From this, all philosophy begins to make sense. You don't understand. Oh. Well, uh, you would have to read it. <laughs> That's only if any of you can even read. I can read them. I can read them, right? I don't believe that. Time. Well, then find a copy of this book, Rene Descartes' Discourse on Method, and it will change your life as it has done mine. But then, why am I filled with sadness? Oh, grief? that's because you haven't seen me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> you can analyze me part by part. <laughs> Why am I filled with such grief and he sadness? Always ignores me. News <laughs> has just recently reached me that this great man of philosophy died last year, 1650, February 11th. <laughs> but as long as his words are read, the wisdom of Rene Descartes will live on. Thank you. Trespassing on my property here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am Sir John McClellan of Bombay, Third Lord Kirkubri. And I succeeded to that. Oh, great stuff. And I succeed, don't put me off my words, I'll forget them. <laughs> <laughs> and I succeeded to that title four years ago upon the death of my cousin, 
Sir Thomas McClellan, God rest his soul. And he inherited the title from his uncle, Sir Robert McClellan, <clears throat> the very same Sir Robert who, along with two other gentlemen of this borough, engaged the good ship Planter to set sail from this very harbour here in the year of our Lord, 1622, with the first boatload of colonists to the Americas from Scotland. Just two years, you will all remember, after the more famous voyage to the New World of 1620. And I can hear you all thinking and saying, ah yes, the Mayflower. The Mayflower. Well done. And Sir Robert, that Sir Robert I'm just telling you about, his father, another Thomas McClellan, had this castle here built 69 years ago in 1582, and it has become the ancestral home of the McClellan family. Now, a little bit more about myself. Oh, I can help. I can tell you. Can you oh, like for <laughs> goodness sake, get away, Annie Kennedy. My goodness, what are you doing? At, I, if I were your husband, I'd have you under lock and key. Well, I'm just as well your name, my husband. By, by oh. this time of night, for goodness sake. Oh. A curse on the community. As I was saying, I fight, sir for the solemn league and covenant. I'm a covenanter. And if you don't know what that means, look it up. <laughs> Aye. And I trust that all you gentlemen here are of the same persuasion. Aye. Otherwise, Aye. otherwise yes, I are. might have to invite you to defend yourselves. Aye. These are dangerous and difficult times in Scotland. Every man must decide where he stands on this issue. Thank the Lord that our King Charles II of that name has sworn to uphold both Kirk and Covenant. And for that reason, I was honoured to carry his train at his coronation earlier this year. Now, who have we here? Johnny Maxwell! What are you doing here? You work in my gardens. I pay you good money to work in my gardens. And here you are straving about the streets of Kirkcubri when you should be working. If you're that keen on walking, you can march over to the east. <laughs> Away with them guards. And join General Leslie Levies who are preparing to march south and take on that regicide Cromwell. Ah, Mistress Buckley, how good to see you this evening. How are you? I'm well, sir. Ah, it's very good. And your husband? Aye, ah, he's very well too. And, and, and in business? It's going well. It's going well. Oh, <laughs> Mistress Gertrude, you're the very cornerstone of the community here. Thank you, sir. A good Protestant woman. Just what I need for my oh, plantations over in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, good, strong Protestant woman are the backbone of the community over there. Just what's needed to keep those damnable Catholics under control. Ah, well, Mistress Guthrie, I have three farms over there, tenanted by good men from here. Maxwell is in one and Armstrong is another. But the third, a very large farm, is as yet untenanted and would require four strong men to look after it and keep the Fenians under control. Can you help me, Mr. Scutton? Aye, aye, I could, sir. I could. Oh, how would that be? I have four strong boys at home. Oh! Raw laddies. That is just what we're looking for, Mr. Scutton. And there's another kitchen here! Well, uh, I don't know about him. Uh, Mrs. Dudley, tell your husband 
come up and meet me here in the castle this very evening, and we'll discuss business. Good, good day to you, Mr. Scott. Come along, everybody. Nothing more to see here.